maybe those of you who are interested in finite element methods would be clear with these kinds of animations where the modal response. So I guess this year, this year, if I found in the internet, I, I thought I'll just use this as an example. The second mode of the uh, beam, there'd be nodal points on this beam. So where there is minimum amplitude. So if you amplify this example to an actual car, an actual car, if you simulate, would also have similar bending modes. Those modes could be around 28 hertz, 32 hertz, whatever, depending on the size of the car, the stiffness of the car. Find nodal points on the vehicle level. So these nodal points are excellent contenders for suspension mounts. So if you want to mount the chassis, so your ideal location would be a nodal point because they have the least amplitude for a global vibration. So similarly, on the right hand side, you can see pictures of uh, modes of the acoustic cavity. So the volume inside the cabin is also important. The shape of the cabin inside also is the shape and the size of the cabin inside also determines the frequencies at which uh, it uh, resonates. For example, a station wagon would have as low as 40 hertz. So if you have a door mode at 40 hertz as well, uh, you'd see resonance issues, you'd see booming noise inside the cabin. Moving on, so how do we solve uh, in these problems and how do we optimize the solutions? Uh, so to give you a very brief introduction here as we are, there are many methods to reduce uh, noise and vibration. If you're building a house, you're not so bothered about weight or mass or the cost is also it's not a big factor if you want to isolate if you want to have a good image quality in your house but if you're making a car you need to be very sensitive to mass and cost so how do you achieve a very good noise and vibration quality with minimum mass and cost that is our objective so we focus on having the best structure early on in the design loop so what we do is model mismatch or also known as impedance mismatch, where we try to have some separation in the frequencies of the mode shapes so that they don't interfere with each other or they don't resonate with each other. So if we go back uh, to this chart, so we can have, we usually have similar charts where we tabulate the different frequencies, the different sources, the different parts, the different frequencies, uh, the different acoustic modes and see if there is any clash. So those clashes usually point us to some future issues in the vehicle. So uh, these are different things we look for uh, during the end of development uh, process. We are looking for an optimum mode allocation, resonance targets, input point impedances should be higher. So for that, we use rubber bushes, uh, so that the transmissibility of forces are low. We need better panel performance. If you have uh, flat panels, flat large panels, that would boom at very low frequencies. But if you have very stiff panels, then also very stiff and light panels would radiate a lot of noise at higher frequencies. So there are a lot of things we need to intelligently design in order to have good NVH quality. So moving on, for example, for a car, on your left hand side, you have the cabin first cavity at 4 or 43 hertz. So, if I ask you a question, how do you change the cavity mode? The answer is you cannot change the cavity mode. The cavity mode is a function of the volume of the cabin, of the air cavity, and the properties of air. So I'm sure that we are not going to change the properties of air inside the cabin as a design change. So what we can only do is work on the other resonances rather than the cavity resonances. So the cavity resonances at the start of the design loop, if we have information about, we can easily say that, okay, we need to avoid these resonances. Say we need to avoid 40 Hertz, 80 Hertz, 120 Hertz. So these resonances we need to avoid, we need to at least keep a distance of 10 Hertz from those. So as you can see here, this problem gets solved just after we stiffen up the door and uh, increase its frequency away from the cavity mode. Moving on, uh, this was one very interesting slide that I made. 
um, where I describe the different methods we use according to the frequency. So different modeling methods we use, the different simulation numerical methods we use at different frequencies. So it starts with static analysis where we are only looking at, into the stiffness of the component without any mass effect. So let's put it at zero hertz. So at low frequency, it's a MBD. So up to about 20 hertz or sometimes a little higher. So we are concerned about the kinematics of the system. So we do MBD here. Now we have FEA at the very important crucial zone of 20 to 200 hertz, where dictate the structure of the vehicle. So this, we get the resonant responses of the structure and with many simulation techniques, we're able to understand what we need to do to have a great design of the vehicle. At mid-frequency zones, 200 hertz and higher, up to about one kilohertz, we have something called FEA, SEA hybrid. Uh, it is a hybrid method in between the, determin uh, the deterministic uh, FEA method and the statistical methods we have. So we, uh, briefly about the statistical methods we have, uh, it's basically we transform the problem into a heat flow problem, a thermal problem. So you'd ask me, how can a sound problem become a heat problem? So this is an intelligent technique we use to simplify and to enable us to simulate basically, because as we go to higher frequencies, there's something called modal density, the number of modes for any frequency band, say between 500 to 502 hertz, between two hertz band, there will be a lot of frequencies that you need to account for. And due to this increasing modal density as we increase in frequency, and also because of tolerances in the vehicle. So if you test the same vehicle from the same line, say 60 different vehicles, if you test from the same line, you'd see different measurements for the high frequency accelerations or whatever you measure. So what does it mean? It means that even the small tolerances, small gaps and finishes, some small deviations in the structure leads to different responses at high frequencies. So we need a different approach to solve those problems. So that is given by the statistical energy analysis method, which is basically the, the sound transmission problem as a heat flow problem. More into that, maybe later, yeah. So as you can see, with increasing wavelengths, deterministic methods are good, are excellent. So we just need to understand the resonances and how they couple together, and we just need to isolate those resonances. At increasing similarity to higher systems as the frequency goes higher, we need statistical methods. So moving on, summarize the enriched requirements. It comes from the customer, the corporate uh, vision. Okay, uh, the customer, the corporate vision, what the vision of the organization is, what kind of car they want to make, what kind of customers they want to please, and what are the regulatory must, what kind of uh, regulations you need to follow, otherwise you won't have the license to sell the car. So these dictate the enriched requirements, and uh, this table on the right is just to summarize the normal approach to solve the enriched requirements, uh, enriched issues. So for exterior noise passed by in idle, we try to minimize them, we also try to minimize the interior noise, due to squeak, rattle, resonance effects, load noise, auxiliaries, load reversal, gearbox noises. Uh, we have design elements as well. We try to design the sound so that we have great articulation index. It means how clearly you can communicate inside the vehicle with a fellow passenger. Is the passenger audible? So uh, the music quality inside the vehicle, even actuation noises. So a lot of components which we need to de uh, delve into it in detail. So it's a vast field and there is so much to explore in NBH. So to wrap it up, let's look into the career uh, path and job opportunities. Not to wrap it up, just to have an idea of where, uh, what the future looks like. Where are we headed in terms of NBH? in the current scenario and the future. 
So as you can see, there's an increasing trend that we we are moving away from fossil fuels, from IC combustion, or internal combustion engines, and we are electrifying our um, automotive industry. So that means that we no longer have the engine which used to make a lot of noise in the low frequency and the high frequency as well. So there was a lot of masking that was available. So many small sounds, was squeaks, rattles, small fan issues, they were not audible to the customer before. But now, because there is no engine, you have a very silent electric motor. The motor is not actually silent. It has a radiation at higher frequencies, uh, which is tonal noise, we can come to that. So we no longer have the masking, so it becomes really important to give more importance to MDH. We have even tighter mass budgets because we're concerned about the range of electric vehicles. So we can't just put mass any way we please. Uh, we need to be very careful about the mass of the vehicle, about the mass targets. And there is also this trend for stiffer, lighter structures, carbon fibers, organic structures. Many things are coming up in the automotive industry. It's really an exciting time to be in the automotive industry. So these lighter and stiffer structures in turn mean that there will be more uh, possibility of noise radiation. And with tighter mass budgets, it becomes increasingly difficult to meet engaged targets. So the more the challenge, the more the reward as well. So the more importance the industry gives to NVH. We have motor and battery in VH, which is an evolving branch, quite exciting as well. We are also giving more importance now to high frequency simulation with SEA and hybrid FEA, SEA. Even though we don't have engine noise, right? We won't have engine noise in the future, we'd have motor noise, but road noise and aerodynamic noise would still be there and it would still be a concern for the automakers. With automation, we would see people traveling on autopilot. So they would be engaging in other activities in leisure, in uh, recreation, where psychoacoustics or the psychological aspect of sound becomes more important. Passenger comfort becomes the center, uh, takes the center stage. What do we need for to start a great career in MDH? So those of you who are deeply interested in physics, they have an edge. So if you're interested in vibration phenomena, mechanics, etc., then NDH is for you. Uh, you should be able to simplify complex problems and apply theoretical com uh, concepts in the real world. So what I mean by that is, uh, you'd, as an MBH engineer, you'll come across seemingly very difficult problems, but uh, with the correct approach, you can simplify things and propose effective solutions, which can be of great value to any automaker. So if you want to learn SEA and SEA, that's really good. If you can have a ba uh, the, basic, uh, the basics of these uh, disciplines of so finite element analysis and statistical energy analysis. So you can also you choose to learn data acquisition and signal processing. Normally, you don't need to just follow one career path, but usually people start as a test or CE and VH engineer. It can be in the automotive industry, in the aerospace industry, or the consumer electronics industry. You can go into sound design as well. If you have a good grasp and knowledge of sound, the physics behind it, you can also go into, and if you have the interest as well, you can go into sound design, into psychoacoustics. Uh, and one thing to note here is that you do, uh, as an NVH engineer, you'll be interacting with people throughout your organization, people doing different things, uh, responsible for different components. So over a period of years or decades, you will gain a lot of insight to multiple disciplines and this would help you to take up leadership roles later in your career as well. So about the feature trends, you search through the internet, uh, you'd find that in the future we'll also be doing high frequency simulation as I already mentioned, also multi-physics simulation. I remember there is one vendor called Comsol that already does it where you combine flow acoustics or coupled electromagnetic simulation with structural simulation. Ideally, every problem that you face is a multi-physics problem. We try to make our assumptions and try to create, uh, conceive 
a structural problem, a acoustic problem, a CFD problem, and so on. But ideally, if we are able to do a multi-physics simulation, then it would be, I mean, the next best thing to do. So we also have big data and machine learning in predicting performance. I know about this collaboration between universities and the OEMs where we're trying to predict performance with feeding CA data or historic CA data and trying to predict performance of a new design. So we also have many things happening in mobile app development where there will be mobile apps that will be listening to your car and telling you much uh, before a problem happens, alerting you of the problem. Another interesting field is the active noise cancellation system. So we also have involvement of AI to have better active noise cancellation. So these are really interesting fields. There, if you look up the internet, you will also find uh, non-traditional materials uh, that are that can be used to create uh, car bodies. So Daimler has one concept where they grow biologically, grow the car body biologically by biological processes. So <laughs> eliminating the need for it conventional factory. So these are just to give you, present to your menu, some of the interesting things that are happening and uh, just as a dose of inspiration. Yeah, and let's, uh, let's me ending with uh, my favorite quote from Nikola Tesla. If you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration.